Making a Stuart model steam plant. This is part 86. Repairing a small bell type steam whistle. This is a small bell type whistle from PM Research. I'm in the lucky position to have two of these type of whistles. One of them needs to be fitted to the steam plant, but whichever one I use, it has to work properly. And the one on screen at the moment works perfectly. When you compare the distance between the bell and the valve, it's different on both whistles. The problem is that even when I adjust the position of the bell, the whistle does not whistle. The best thing to do is to show how it doesn't work. I've connected an air supply. I repositioned the bell on this whistle to the same distance as on the other one that I have which works. Here I'm trying to realign the bell with the base but to no avail. I wonder why the other one works perfectly and this one doesn't. I know, I'll remove the bell entirely and have a look at the mechanism. And there's not much to look at really, just a central threaded rod which holds the bell in position, which in turn screws into the centre of the valve. I'm feeding 40 pounds per square inch of compressed air to the whistle. At that pressure it just will not work. If I reduce the pressure to about 20 pounds per square inch, then it does whistle after a fashion. I think it's time to look at this whistle in more detail. I'm removing the central shaft, which is held in position by the lock nut that you can see. Even at this stage, I think I can see the problem. For this type of whistle to work, you need a constant stream of air or steam from the gap between the centre part and the body of the valve itself. The gap between the casting and the centre part on this whistle doesn't look right which means that the jet of air or steam is out of alignment with the bell. And it sounds like this. A while ago, I found an old flute that I'd bought for my daughter when she was a child. And I thought I'd learn to play the flute. I only ever wanted to play a tune called Pavan by a composer called Fauré because I really like it. When I first started to try and play the flute, I could only blow a note when I finally could blow a note for four seconds. And when I watched James Galway, I realised that this was not the right way to do it. And the sound of this whistle reminds me of the sound that I got from the flute before I figured out how to blow across the hall. I refitted the bell and adjusted it one more time and again, it was no good at all. The only time it would whistle was at very low pressure. Time to have a look at the central shaft and see how straight it is. I fitted the shaft into the chuck of my Myford ML7R lathe and as you can see, it's spinning quite accurately. I tried to persuade it to run out of true by pressing a piece of mahogany against it, but no, it was perfectly fine. Then I applied some common sense and logic. It would not be the shaft that was bent. The part that was bent was the thread on the end of the bar, and as you can see here, it's not in alignment at all. Health and safety warning, this is not a good idea. I'm showing it for the purposes of the video and the fact that this is how I usually straight and bent shafts. What I'm doing at the moment is purposely bending the shaft and making it worse. I've found that a good sense of rhythm is quite useful for this job. But you have to tap the part much more slowly than I'm doing, because what happens, you tap it, suddenly it's perfect, then you tap it again and then it's not. The process is, tap the part, look at it, and then if it's still not straight, tap it again, but if it's straight, leave it alone. Eventually, I straightened the shaft and that was perfect. What I'm doing here is using a bit of ultraviolence with a hammer to actually reshape the casting, making the slot the same all the way around the centre part. Once I'd done that, I cleaned up the top of the casting using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. In this clip, you can clearly see how the casting is not even all the way around. 
It looks like the machining when it was made was slightly off. This is the other whistle that I have, the one that works perfectly. What I need to do is set the bell on the other one to the same distance from the casting as this. And the distance is one eighth of an inch. I carefully reassembled the whistle and set the gap to the same as this one. Then I reconnected the compressed air line to the other whistle. And lo and behold, this is what happened. The gap is one eighth of an inch, as on the other whistle. And when I look at it now, even though the casting is a bit uneven, the slot around the centre part that supports the bell is even all the way round. And it whistles very sweetly. The job is complete, the whistle is fixed. Here I'm fitting the whistle in position back on the turret, and this time I'm adding a double union. Onto this I then screw an elbow, a PM Research cast elbow to be exact, and simply fit the whistle to the top of this. Originally when I fitted this whistle to the turret, the lever stuck out at the side. I've changed this, it's better with the lever being near the boiler, that way it's less likely to get knocked and damaged. And that is it, a bit of an excursion away from building the steam plant, but at least the whistle works and everything's OK. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.